the movie preview critic, informing and entertaining your movie world. Also, this is MPN, your source for movie truth. Broadcasting from deep inside the Hollywood mountain, providing relevant movie information instead of bullshit personal trivia about the people who star in them. I mean seriously, who gives a kind of sandwich Will Smith ate for lunch? Welcome to Movie Preview News with your host, the Movie Preview Critic. Hey, what's up? Here's what's new in your movie world. Pink Panther f***ing 2. I know, I'm thinking the same thing. Why are they making a sequel to a movie? Depressingly, the answer is easy. Money. Somehow, the Pink Panther reboot made a profit. To help make sense of this, let's use the special graphics features of our editing software. With a budget of 80 million, it made 82 in the US and 58 overseas for a worldwide total of 140. Add in DVD sales cause some pussy parent couldn't say no to their spoiled brat kid who grabbed it at the checkout line and it made enough money to give the impression that audiences want more. That's right kid, the DVD you just tortured your parents into buying is also made up of the baby pudding that's in your pampers. And while we're on the subject, how could it possibly cost 80 million to make? Sure, you're on location in Paris, and you have to sign paychecks for Steve Martin and Beyonce. But what is that, like 30 million? Where did the other 50 go? Let's compare the budgets of some other 2006 movies. V for Vendetta costs 54 million. That's pretty unbelievable, considering you got a plasma screen as big as a wall, CGI destruction of major London landmarks, and Natalie Portman with a shaved head. Click cost 70 million, and you got Adam Sandler, who definitely gets paid more than Steve Martin and Beyonce combined, Kate Beckinsale, Christopher Walken, David Hasselhoff, some mild visual effects, and a high-tech design for a remote control. So with cameras set to roll in August, let's try to convince Steve Martin not to make another box office hit that's really cinematic shit. Steve, why are you doing this to us again? If it goes the way I think it's gonna go, I will see you at the Oscars. You're pretty confident, Steve. What makes you think this movie will get Oscar attention? It's, uh, it's script is butter, butter, butter. This stuff is butter. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's all good. It's, uh, it's a cheeky baby. Hmm. You're singing a familiar tune, Steve. Do you remember saying this? We're not doing anything traditional here. We're working in a new style. We're working in, in uh, Cinema Nouveau. That was a fancy sounding answer. So I looked up Cinema Nouveau. Steve, it means cinema not funny. If past behavior is the best predictor of future behavior, then let's look at the Cinema Nouveau of Pink Panther Reboot 2006. Cinema Nouveau. Quite funny. No, it's not, Steve. And after doing some research, MPN has discovered this is actually the one millionth time this joke has been used in the history of movies. One million times. And how about this moment? Positive to the negative, the negative to the positive. There. I wonder what's gonna happen. Cinema Nouveau. And of course, a comedy bit inspired by the infamous David Letterman Oprah Uma joke that plagued the 1995 Oscars. I would like to buy a hamburger. 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 Oprah? Uma? Uma? Oprah? I would like to buy a hamburger. 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 Cinema, I'm gonna smash my face into this extra large tub of heavily buttered, light exalted popcorn and suffocate myself if these abysmal jokes continue to ear rape me. Nouveau. Hey, baby! Steve, please, you're making me sad. Quit funny. Seriously, Steve, we're all big fans, and we want to see you making great movies. But let's face it, if it wasn't for The Father of the Bride, Cheaper by the Dozen, and now the Pink Panther sequels, you wouldn't have a whole lot going on the last 12 years. If your agent is telling you to make sequels, then how about the Three Amigos Dos, 
We all know Chevy Chase and Martin Short have plenty of free time. Just anything but the Pink Panther 2. Can't you see you're poisoning your once respected body of work? Well, I never thought of it that way. Well, think of it this way. Pick up the phone, call MGM, and tell them you're sick. Sick of making shitty, unoriginal movies. Sick of selling out your comic genius just so you can make a few dollars. And they can take Pink Panther 2 and shove it up their lion roaring ass. What do you mean we're not making the movie? I made them a promise. What about the promise you made to your fans not to make shit? We don't quit! We do not quit! You have to quit, Steve. If not for the sake of the audience, then do it to save yourself. Steve, fight it! You're stronger than this! Stay with us! I would like to buy a Undaga! Fight it, Steve! I am uh, this is making me sad. I would like to, to buy a Undaga! Cut the feed! I, like to buy a I can't look at him anymore. He's gone. We've lost Steve Martin. Twelve years of making sh movies has destroyed a comic genius. This is the end, my only friend, the end, it hurts to set you free, but you'll never follow me. The end of laughter, this is the end. That was some pretty depressing shit. Let's take a break. Welcome back. Now that you've seen a no bullshit version of the preview, it's time for an MPN no bullshit movie poll. No bullshit movie poll. What makes you want to see? I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Is it A, the comedy magic of Adam Sandler and Kevin James? B, Jessica Beale's T. C. Jessica Beals A. Or D. Jessica Beals T. N. A. Participate in Movie Democracy by posting your answer in the comments section. Now, believe it or not, there's an Alvin and the Chipmunks live action movie coming out in December. When last we saw them, the Chipmunks look like this. Here's how they look now. Yes, they've been poochified. Alvin seems to be modeled after Eminem, Simon after LL Cool J, and Theodore after Biggie Smalls. Here's the movie poster. Notice Theodore's hand. It seems as if it's in a position to be holding something. Perhaps a little chipmunk-sized Mary Jane. Chipmunk, please. You best be hooking up some White Castle in my other hand, because a chipmunk gets a mother munchies after token some chronic. And if a chipmunk can't get their munch on, they get crazy. I'll pop a cap in a chipmunk for a slider. I don't give a f Do I look like I give a f chipmunk? Because I don't. And how about some biatches, chipmunk? You can't just give a chipmunk a blunt and some sliders and forget about the hose. Sh a chipmunk? What do we look like? A bunch of chump beavers? Uh... Earmuff children under 18 if they're watching, because the chipmunks are about to sing a song for us. Oh, okay, never mind. They're going with oh, a nice G rated class. Ready to sing your song? I'll say we are. Yeah, let's sing it now. Okay, Simon? Okay. Okay, Theodore? Okay. Okay, Alvin? Alvin? Alvin! Okay! I'm gonna get you in the back seat, windows up, that's the way you like the fuck up. I don't even want to think about what they've done to the chipettes. What you gonna do with all that ass, all that ass inside of me? I'ma make, 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 make you scream. And on that note, we finish the show with some movie wisdom. Sometimes in the heat of passion, the little head tells the big head what to do, and that the big head should think twice about it.
Long live good movies. <laughs>